Peter had some sort of burden. We, we know that Peter was bold, and but he was also humble enough that he wasn't afraid to ask questions. And Peter had asked this question before. This is something that was on his mind. Lord, how many times? How many times do I have to forgive my brother? How, how many times, Lord? Was it because of something Peter had done? Or, like I believe, maybe the fact that Peter was having a hard time forgiving somebody else? Because that seems to me where the question was directed at. Now, how many times are you going to forgive me? But how many times must I forgive? And even when somebody uh, does me wrong. Numerous times. How many times? And the Lord answered him. We look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 through 25. By telling him the story. The parable of the unforgiving servant. Or maybe the uh, unmerciful servant. And the story speaks for itself, but uh, I'm going to give you the summary of it. Uh, basically, Jesus says there's a king, and he says that it's time to pay dues. People owe him some money. And uh, one of the servants that owed him a, a significant sum of money, a um, million dollars, he called in and uh, said, you got to pay up right now. And the servant said, I can't do it. He says, I, then I'm going to put you in jail and your whole family in jail, and you're going to sit there and you're going to be tortured and punished until you can pay your dues. And uh, the guy says, I can't do it. Throws his, himself at the mercy of this king. He says, please forgive me. And of course, the king found he had mercy on him. He said, okay, I forgive you. Just, you know, go on. Don't worry about any of that debt. Go on. Of course, that servant, the unforgiving servant, he goes out and somebody else owed him a much smaller amount of money. thousand dollars. And he says, you got to pay me this thousand dollars. And the guy says, I can't do it can't do it. Then the unforgiving servant says, then you're going to go to jail and he's going to punish He punishes him. But about this time, of course, some of the other uh, uh, servants saw what was going on. They went and reported to the king what had happened. Of course, the king's not happy about it. He, he forgave this servant, but then this servant went and turned around and forgive somebody else. So he called that original servant in and he put him in prison, punished him, tortured him, and said, you must forgive. That's what Jesus said. It was like the kingdom of heaven. It's kind of like uh, the wimpy here. Remember him? Uh, here's some word of advice. Don't give this guy money for a hamburger. Because he owes everybody money for that hamburger. But, but the fact is, the Lord gives it freely. He gives that forgiveness. He gives us that mercy. And what is he asking us to do? And what is he telling Peter with this parable? He's telling him to pay it forward. We've all heard that before. Maybe you've even got stuck in line at McDonald's where everybody's paying it forward. I'm going to pay for the person behind me. And then the person behind them pays for the person behind them. A the really bad situation you might get in is if you've got a, a car full of kids behind you and you just want a cup of coffee. All right? <laughs> Think about it. The fact is, uh, that's kind of what Jesus is telling us to do here. Not just pay for that forgiveness because Jesus forgives us all. God forgives us through Christ Jesus, I should say. All of them, all those debts, all those sins that we owe for, all he's asking us to do is forgive each other. And we know that we're going to look deep at that. That can be hard. That's not easy. It's not, not always easy. I want you to think about your lives right now and what they would be like if you yourself weren't forgiven. And what you can do with this application of faith that we have in forgiving each other. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for someone else? What does it mean for our obedience to Him? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, Be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. So we've got to forgive. But not just say forgive. We've got to forgive in a way that reveals the merciful nature of our King. That's what we have to do. See, when we forgive, it's not even for our glory. It's not so that we can hold it over someone's head and say, hey, I forgave you, so I deserve praise and glory. We give God the glory. Revealing the fact that we follow Him and His merciful nature. 
a remarkable example of that that we could maybe find in paying for it. It might come between these three men. Uh, Christ, Stephen, and Paul. Now, of course, Christ, his blood, is what forgives our sins. We all know that. And if Stephen decides not to forgive Paul, the fact is, that's not going to affect Paul's salvation. Right? Paul needs to be forgiven, just like everybody else, to God. But, however, Stephen, Stephen, for him, he must forgive. So what happens? Of course, we know Christ forgave it all. So Stephen's going to have a remarkable example of that faith. He's going to show revealing the king through his own actions. And what's he out there doing? He's out there teaching these folks. He's teaching Paul and some of the other ones. And they're accusing him. This is not a good situation. This is a hostile environment for Stephen. He's telling them about the Lord. He's telling them, he's telling them about his, his Jesus. He's telling them the Messiah, the reason we have forgiveness. And they scream blasphemy, and they decide they're going to they're stone him to death. They're going to kill him. And we all know Paul, where he stands in the story, he was over there holding their coats, encouraging them. Go ahead, throw those rocks at him, kill him. But what did Stephen say? He said a similar thing to what Christ said, didn't he? Remember when Christ was up on that cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Now, it's real easy for us to think about that and think, well, he's talking about this soldier here and this soldier here, the ones that had accused him and they put him up there on that cross. I think it a bit differently because I think when Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, he was thinking of every single one of us. Every one of us. Including Stephen. Including Stephen. So as Stephen is taking his last breath, what does he say? Father, don't, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. That included Paul, who was standing right there. Think about that remarkable example. Paul hears this. It's in his mind. He'll feel awful about it later after he accepts Christ himself. But what we can say about Stephen's remarkable example, he understood what forgiveness was. He understood what it meant to him. So what are we going to do? We need to understand what forgiveness means today. And like Stephen, he practiced what he preached. He was telling them about forgiveness. He was telling them about the Lord. He set the example for that. And he's also hopeful that maybe through this example, Jesus might be seen in him. Folks, that's how we got to live our lives every day as Christians to hope that Jesus will be seen through us. That we can behave in a way that shows that we believe in him. So what about this forgiving? What about this forgiveness that we have to give? Let's look at five aspects of it today. Number one, it could be difficult. To stand up here and say this is easy to forgive each other would be a bold-faced lie, and we all know it. Now, maybe, you, maybe sometimes they're easier than others. Maybe if we're talking about a really small matter, eh, whatever, I forgive you. If we're talking about something large, something big, it would be very hard. That king that forgave that large debt. It's a lot more than the unforgiving servant that wouldn't forgive a small one. But forgiving can be difficult, especially when you're unclear about their confession and about repentance. It can be real hard. You don't believe them. They say they're sorry. But as difficult as it is, we still got to do it. It's going to take strength. And it's going to take courage. And it sometimes might take time. Like I remember my dad telling me long ago, be quick to forgive. Now I remember him saying that, and I've tried to my best with it. But it also takes strength. It also takes courage. And don't kid yourself. Sometimes it takes some time to be able to truly forgive someone. But what are we going to do as Christians, just like we thought, talked about last week with the, 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 the par, uh, prodigal son and the prodigal son's older brother that was left standing outside? We've got to be like that prodigal son and realize. We've got to realize ourselves. I'm a sinner. I, too, am a sinner. And we've got to rethink where we're at in life. We have to say, you know what? I'm a sinner, but Christ forgave me. And we have to resolve that because we're following Christ, we have a responsibility. I must forgive others. I must. Which leads us to the second thing. Forgiveness for Christians 
It's not optional. <clears throat> you can't just say, I don't think I'm going to forgive. I don't think I want to do this. Probably you don't want to. What does the scripture say? If you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. <clears throat> Dwell on that for a second. That's pretty serious. If our sins aren't forgiven, folks, we're lost. Will not forgive your sins. We refuse to forgive others. Let's realize that we think and resolve that in our lives. Let's not refuse to forgive others. Even though we know it might take time. So remember back to what Peter was asking the Lord. How many times? Of course, he gave him that example, but right before then, that Jesus said, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Other translations might say seven and seven, or seventy and seven. So depending on how you want to take a few words there that I don't understand in the foreign languages, we're talking about either 77 times or we're talking about 490 times. I don't know about the math that well, but that's about seems right to me. But now I want you to think about that. That's a bunch, right? To think about that we have to forgive others, like we have to forgive others 77 or 490 times. But wait a minute. Think about this for a second. Because we've got to forgive others as God forgave us through Christ. So now I want you to think about those numbers. 77, 400. Let's say 77 because it might make me feel better about this illustration that I'm, that I'm going to give you right now. Uh, the fact is, is this a, a bunch? Uh, no, it's not. Absolutely it's not. Think about where you would be if Jesus' blood only covered 77 or 490 of your sins. The fact is, God's not keeping tally. Because we put our faith and trust in Jesus. Remember what Scripture says? He remembers them no more. Amen. He's not up there with the list checking off saying, Oh, I got you, and I got you, and I got you. We're forgiven in a way that we could never even possibly fathom to forgive each other. So is 77 or 490 a lot when we're talking? Maybe it really feels that way on a human level. But when we talk about ourselves, folks, I'm afraid of last week if it was only 77. I might have beat that number. Man, I, I want to think that I did. But what I want to know for sure is that I'm covered as I continue to try my hardest to live for Christ. So no, 77 or 490 is not a lot. Because God's forgiven you way more than that. Amen. And if you have any questions about that, better think hard. So what are we going to do then? We've got to forgive. Plain and simple, it's not optional. We've got to forgive no matter what. Even when they don't ask. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because we know through Scripture that you know, we do need to be asked. We do need to have that. But for your own sake, and we'll get to this later, even when they don't ask. There's different circumstances where this would apply differently. Maybe if you forgive somebody for what they did and they're no longer with us in this world. Um, maybe if it's just kind of something that needs to be between people that, that don't necessarily need to say that as you move forward. Regardless of that, us as Christians, for your own sake, even when they don't ask, just forgive them. we got to forgive even when they do it again. And the other time that, that uh, Peter had asked Jesus, uh, Jesus said, even if they come to you and, and, and say, I'm sorry, and then they go out and they do it again, and then they come back and say, I'm repenting, I'm sorry, you forgive them, and they come back and do it again. That's where Peter got that original number of seven. Or do I forgive him seven times? Because he already asked that. God's, Lord, Jesus said, just keep forgiving them. Keep forgiving, no matter how many times. you got to forgive them even when it's really bad. Even when it really hurts. Even when you feel awful about it. you got to forgive them. You've got to forgive even when it's yourself. Think about that one for a second. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves, don't we? We have to be able to let it go. 
some, if we've done something wrong, and I believe that we have to forgive others, I think that includes ourselves as well. You've got to forgive yourself. You've got to forgive even when, and you fill in the blank yourself. Because it really doesn't matter what you put in there. But now I want to, I want to use a personal story for you. I'm going to fill in my own blank today. I've got to be able to forgive even when, even when, uh, someone decides to text you to give you the results of the Duke game, even though you just started watching the Duke game because you had recorded it earlier because you were teaching Bible study that night. Has that ever happened to any of you? No? It's awful. You're like, you got your, uh, you got your paper drink, get your snack, you got your cup and pants on, you're just uh, sitting down, relaxing, you push play on the uh, recorded game, you Turn off all your notifications on your phone because you don't want it to be ruined. And then you see a text. Well, you got to make sure you answer your text. You see it's from a friend. You look at it. Oh, sorry about Duke's last second loss. I know that stinks. Ha, ha, ha. I got to forgive you and that person. So, Ryan, <coughs> I'm sorry. But, I mean, I, I, for, I forgive you, buddy. I still love you. It's, you know, behind us now. I, I don't want to have to retaliate to try to embarrass you at all whatsoever. So... Because that wouldn't be true forgiveness. Good times. And you know the fact is, uh, he did actually do that. So, and maybe I should ask for your forgiveness because I really was mad. <laughs> and later on, I was like, I probably shouldn't have gotten that mad about that. Uh, anyway, the fact is, it gave us an opportunity. It gave us an opportunity to have some of the fun of the sermon. It gave us an opportunity of... To, to laugh about later, sure. But what does forgiveness bring an opportunity for in our lives as Christians? What kind of opportunities? Let's look. Forgiveness or forgiving may bring us the opportunity for. Now look at this story here. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. They were having a problem. The Corinthians church had a lot of problems, to be honest with you. Uh, but this specific thing, there was a man that had done something wrong. It doesn't matter for, for today. And what does it say? It is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. This was Paul's advice to them. This church. Forgive him. Move forward. Don't let him be discouraged. Love him still. Reaffirm your love. Let him know you love him still. And from this alone, we can take some of the things that we know we may have an opportunity for when we forgive. Comfort. It's going to bring comfort for you. Encouragement. Maybe to both of you. Reconciling. Now, I put an asterisk by this because this takes two. This takes two. And this is next week's sermon. Reconcile today, coming next week. Make sure you're here for it. But it can bring that opportunity for it. And maybe even most importantly, remember Stephen and Paul. To bring you the opportunity that others may know Christ, they may know His compassion. If they see Him through you, maybe they want to know how you're able to forgive. That's the example we want to set. And that's an opportunity that we just can't pass up on. So, what does that mean, though? Now let's, let's really look at this now, because this is important stuff. What does forgiving each other mean? What does it not mean? Let's look at what it does not mean first. Forgiving does not mean to forget. Now, remember what we said about God. He chooses to remember our sins no more. God can do that. You can. If someone does you wrong, you can do your best to put it behind you, and maybe in your life it'll be a distant memory, and if someone's really shattered your heart, you know what the fact is, and I've, I've told so many of you this, because I know, I know some of you are hurt. I know that some of you have problems in your life right now that really, really hurt. But you know what? That wound will heal. But it'll always be a scar. It'll always be there. But you can still forgive. But you can't forget. Forgiving does not mean trust. That's earned. Forgiveness is something we should give. But trust is earned. And you can forgive somebody and not say, I trust you to go do whatever you want now. Think about someone who, who, who struggles with drugs. The trust is going to be earned back over some time. You can forgive them. 
Forgiveness does not, but also does not mean to enable toxic charity, is what we'll call that. <clears throat> Using the example again of a drug addict, we all know you don't want to give them money. It's because you've forgiven them does not mean that you want to say, okay, I'm going to help you do whatever it is that you're doing. You've got to be careful of that. Because you've got to love them enough sometimes to say no. And forgiveness also most certainly does not mean you're condoning what they did. It's not cool still. It wasn't all right. It won't be all right if it happens again. It's not saying, you know what, I, I forgive you and what you did, you know, it wasn't wrong. No, it was. That's why there needed to be forgiveness. I think these are important to remember when we go to forgive somebody. Forgiving also does not mean to weaponize your forgiveness. That's something you can just uh, to use or, or, or barter with. When you forgive someone, they really don't owe you anything. They might have to earn that trust back but you give them, you give them forgiveness. You can't just uh, wait till a later date and keep bringing the thing back up. Maybe if you get in an argument, uh, you can't just keep saying, hey, remember when you did this that I forgave you for? That's not really forgiveness. You can't weaponize it. You can't do it. You can't weaponize it in that I'll only forgive you if you do this for me. Right? That's not how forgiveness truly works. But what does it mean? Equally as important for us to look at this. What does forgiveness mean? It means to show mercy. Giving God the glory. Because again, if we try to say, I'm forgiving you, now look how awesome I am. I'm forgiving you, so now you've got to put me up on a pedestal above all else. We're really falling short on what forgiveness truly means. Because we've got to show mercy and give God the glory. But most importantly, maybe, for today, remember that forgiving others is about you. I love this quote here from uh, Lewis Smeeds, uh, a preacher who passed away a few years ago. Theologian, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and then discover that that prisoner was you. All the things that it was causing you because you were having a hard time forgiving. Remember, this is about you. Now, does the person that is being forgiven benefit? Absolutely. Of course they do. But it's about you. Proverbs 14.30 says, A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Forgiving will give you peace. To forgive, that peace is, of course, maybe even going to give you some health. If not physical, uh, spiritually, mentally. You have some spiritual growth when you can truly forgive somebody. We talk about spiritual growth all the time. This is faith in work. This is faith in application. There's nothing more important than us being forgiven, uh, forgiving people because we've read that verse from Matthew as well as so many other verses we got to forgive so the Lord will forgive us. That spiritual growth, important. Application of faith, again, at its finest. These are all things that we can have by being forgiving people. Forgiveness, though, it, it does mean some other things, too. It means you got to let go. Hate. Anger. Resentment. Look, that's hard. Because you didn't like what they did still. You didn't condone it. Now let the anger go for your own, your own benefit, for your own good. It means to let go of gossip and slander. In other words, somebody does you wrong. You can't be going around town and telling everybody you hate them. You can't be going around town gossiping about it. Because now you're guilty. And you need forgiveness from them if you start doing this. Let go of it. It means to let go of revenge. Or vengeful type thoughts, grudges, if you will. That can be hard. That can be hard. Sometimes people think they forgive whenever actually all they're really doing is thinking, one of these days I'll get you back. And that's how they get through it. That's how Esau was getting through it with his brother Jacob before Jacob fled. It means to let go of bitterness and the stress that comes with it. 
Let it go. It's just not worth it. Let go of that burden in your life. You, as a Christian, you have no reason to carry that burden around. You have no reason to walk around with this anger and this resentment, slanderizing others with vengeful thoughts and the bitterness that comes with it and the stress that goes along with it. You don't have to do that. That burden, you don't have to carry it anymore. Why? Because Jesus has already paid that debt. In fact, Jesus paid it all. Amen. I want you to think about this for a second because it's the same way we started. Stephen needed to forgive Paul and the others that were throwing stones at him for Stephen to set an example because that's what Christ told him to do. What a remarkable example it was that Paul needed the forgiveness of Jesus. He needed that forgiveness of Paul, of Stephen too, but on a different level. Paul needed that forgiveness from Jesus. See, because the fact is Stephen didn't die for your sins. And Stephen knew this very well. Because why was Stephen doing what he was doing? Because Jesus paid it all. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Now, keep this in mind. Who, who was writing this? That same man who asked Jesus, how many times, Lord, must I forgive my brother? He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. What happens when we follow Jesus? Our sins are on that cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What's the last part? And live for what is right. Live for Jesus. So let me ask you today. Will you forgive? Will you forgive? I can't even answer that right now. Maybe some of you can. Maybe, maybe some of you can say, I did. But I think really to know, to be able to say, I know that I will is whenever you were able to say, I resolve in my life that I'm going to follow Jesus. Because He paid my price. Because He paid it all. He paid our price. Why? So that we can live a Christian life. So that we too can be forgiven. To know what that means. So folks, I wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate. I know it takes time. But like my dad told me so long ago, be quick to forgive. I say forgive today. Did why? Not only because Jesus paid it all, but because we owe it all to Him. We owe it all to Jesus. We don't owe Him a price for our sins. He's paid that. That's taken care of. That ransom has been paid. But because He did that, because we said, I follow you, we owe it to Jesus to forgive each other too. Would you please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity we have today to talk about what it means to forgive. And Lord, with that, we thank you so very much for forgiving us because we know how hard forgiving is. Lord, we know that you paid that price for us and we thank you so very much for paying all of it. Help us now, Lord, to realize that us forgiving is just us following you. Lord, we love you so very much and we thank you for our church, for our church family. Help us to love even our enemies. Help us to forgive even if we don't think someone deserves it. Lord, most importantly, help us to realize that you are our God. To rethink when we mess up and to resolve every day to follow you. In Christ Jesus' name we now pray. Amen.